In this video, we are going to create this fully functional Flappy Bird game that allows you to increase your score, you're going to jump, you're going to fall, and you're going to hit the tubes to restart your game. Let's begin by creating a new project. I'm going to put it in my 2024 uh, folder, and I'm just going to simply name it Flappy Bird Tutorial. I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to use the Ford Plus compatibility uh, render mode. Uh, so then we'll create an edit. Next, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make a main scene and I'm just going to name it main. We're then going to go into our bottom left file system and we're going to add three new folders, one called scenes, one called assets, and one called scripts. This makes it so that we can be nice and organized. Next, we're gonna save this main scene into our scenes folder as like so. Let's then make a new scene by pressing this plus button in the top left. And we're gonna add a character body 2D node. With this character body 2D, we're going to be uh, attaching two things. Our mesh instance because we're not using any graphics you guys can do that yourself uh, by adding a sprite 2d and creating textures or downloading them from the internet and we're going to be using a uh, sphere mesh let's, can, let's size up our sphere mesh to about 50 by 50 uh, yeah it looks about right let's do 60 by 60 and let's add a uh, Collision Shape 2D, so we can have a collision with our character. Next, we have to add our shape, so let's add a Circle Shape 2D and size it up to be the size of our sphere, or I guess our circle that we have. Let's rename this character body 2D to our bird, but it's actually a circle, but that doesn't really matter. Let's save this, and we'll save it as bird.scene within our scenes folder. Next, what we're going to add is we're going to want to add our functionality for our uh, bird. So let's add the script by adding the script button. We're going to not save it within scenes. We're going to go into uh, our scripts folder. We're going to open that up, press create, and we have a blank uh, script. We only need two th variables in this instance. We need our gravity, which will be a float, meaning it will have more precision than an integer. And we're gonna do 981 because that is 100 times what our gravity is, because we're gonna be multiplying by delta. We're then next gonna have a var for jump force. And we can make this an export variable, but I'm, I'm quite sure that I wanna do like 450 um we'll do 400 actually have a little bit lower next we're gonna go want to make our uh built-in function physics process so we're gonna type func underscore physics process and we're gonna change our velocity dot y which makes us go down or, uh, and we're gonna add gravity multiplied by delta for this you don't really need to multiply by delta if you want to make gravity 9.81 but uh i'm gonna be multiplying by delta which can be explained in further videos, but I'll have a video in the description explaining what delta is. Next, we're gonna wanna get input. To add a new input button, which I'm gonna use space, we'll go into project, project settings, input map, and we're gonna add a new action called jump. Simply, I'm gonna click this uh, plus, and we're gonna add, make it uh, space for our jump key. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an if statement within our physics process function, uh, checking to see if our input was just pressed jump. We're then going to set our velocity.y equivalent to our negative jump force. The reason why it's negative is because negative is up in, in Godot 2D and positive is down. Finally, we need one more uh, part within our game. Uh, within our bird script, we need move and slide. So if we go into our main scene, we can go into our scenes folder and drag out our bird. That's a good position for it. We'll press play. We'll select our current as our main. And we have a bird that will fall as soon as this loads up. 
So now we have a bird that falls and jumps with space. Easy as pie. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to want to add our tubes. So let's make our tube scene. We're going to have this be a 2D scene because we want the center of our tubes to be what we configure. We're going to rename this to tubes. And I'm going to uh, press the plus button. So we're going to add a mesh instance 2D. And we're going to have this be a uh, quad mesh. We're going to resize this quad mesh to be nice and larger. Um, or we want it to be about half the size of our screen. Uh, that looks good. We're then going to duplicate this mesh instance and move it below. And now we want these to have a relatively uh, for, uh, re relatively far distance from one another. So I'm going to make its position 0 in the X, and we'll do 250 in the Y. Or we'll do three. Uh, we'll do 400 in the Y. Uh, no, that's not that's too much. We'll do 300. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to Transform on the top one, set its X to 0, and we'll have its Y be negative 250 uh, or negative 300. That looks better. We'll see if our bird can fit through here. That looks perfect, but we'll make we'll make the distance negative 350 anyways, and positive 350 for the next one. We just want to add some padding zones. Next, we're going to save this uh, as tubes in scenes, and then we're going to add an area 2D. Our area 2D node has a yellow triangle on it, so we're going to want to add a collision shape 2D. And we're going to change the shape to a rectangle. Let's then make this cover both of these guys. Uh, and then I'll duplicate this using Control D and place it over this other one. That's about right. So with this area 2D, it's going to be looking for a body. So now that we have this, let's add in our functionality to die. So let's add in a script called tubes and we'll add it into our scripts view. We'll open this up, create, and we now have an empty uh, tab. We want our tubes to move instead of our um, bird to move because that's how Flappy Bird works. So we're going to give this a speed. So var speed will make it a float for more precision. And I'm going to set this to, let's say 250 is OK. We're also going to be multiplying this by delta. That's why I chose a higher number. We're then going to go into func underscore physics process once again. You can use process, but I want everything to be under physics process so that everything goes on the correct ticks. And we're just going to subtract our position dot x every single frame, um, every single physics process, by our speed multiplied by delta. That's easy as pi. So if we toss in tubes here, we will see that they move left at a relatively all right pace. Perfect. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add in um, our signals. So if you haven't used signals before, uh, an air, uh, we can click on our area 2D, which has built in signals for detecting body collisions. We can click node, body entered, and we're going to click connect. We can delete this pass line. And all we're going to do is we're going to get our tree. That's our transform. And we're going to reload our current scene which all that does is it restarts our game, and I'll show you that right here by hitting the uh, bricks. Perfect. These nice tubes. Um, the distance looks a little bit too close, so I'm actually going to move them a little bit closer. So we'll do negative uh, 310, and we'll move this on top of it, and we'll do the same thing for this other mesh instance. We'll do 310 because I think that made it a little bit too easy. 
Now we want to make our main scene spawn in our tubes uh, indefinitely. So we'll click on our main. We'll delete these first tubes. And we're going to go uh, and uh, press our plus button. And what we're, oh, not our plus button, we're going to add a script. And we'll just use main.gd. And that, I think that'll work perfectly. We'll go into our scripts folder, we'll press open, and we'll press create. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to get a reference, or if you guys come from Unity, a prefab from our tubes. To do that, we're going to do an at on ready var, uh, and we're going to call it tubes equals a preloaded scene of a uh, tubes. You can also set the um, the type identifier to packed scene if you if you really uh, like using type uh, type hints. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to add a timer to our main scene so that it so that when the timer runs out, it will um, spawn in more tubes. So we're gonna set this to one shot auto start. And I think wait time of one second is a little too quick, so we'll do 1.5. Next, we're going to use um, signals once again. So we're going to click node, and we're going to see, oh, a, when the timer times out, so we'll double click that and connect. This is where the long piece of code comes in. When our timer times out, we're going to make a new variable called our tubes instance. We're going to get an instance of our tubes. And we're going to make it equivalent to our tubes.instantiate. So that means we're making an instance of our new tubes, which is basically a copy. Next, we want to set our tubes.position. So let's set, let's see our uh, leftmost uh, view, 1152. So we're going to do tube instance uh, dot position dot x equals 1152. That means they'll start at the end of the screen. And then we're going to make their y a random range. So we're going to do tube instance, tubes instance dot position dot y. And then we're going to make this equivalent to a rand i range, which is, which is a rand integer range. And I believe it goes from zero to two, six something, uh, 624. So we're gonna make it between 100 and 550. Finally, we need to uh, add this tube instance to our scene. So we're just gonna do add underscore child tubes instance. Also, we want our timer to restart when we end. So we're gonna do dollar sign timer to get an a reference to our timer because it is a child of our main and we're going to do dot start so when we press play you're going to see that we have our little flappy bird game but there's one more thing about flappy bird that we all want i'm guessing and that is our um score so to get a score, I'm gonna we're gonna introduce a auto load scene. So we're gonna press plus. Uh, we can just do a 2D scene, which is fine. We can also do an empty node, but I'm just gonna do a 2D scene, and I'm gonna name this auto load. We're gonna make our auto load have a script, uh, and we're going to save it to uh, scripts. We're also gonna save our auto load scene to scenes. And all we're going to do is add one variable called score. So var score will make it an uh, int equals zero because we start at zero. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to main. We'll press 2D and we're going to add a canvas layer and uh, so that we can have some control nodes on it. Adding a canvas layer is better than just adding a control directly as a child of scene, uh, as our main scene. We'll then add a control, and we're going to click at the top 
uh, anchor preset the entire screen. And finally, as a child of our, con of our control, we're going to add a label. We're going to type in a uh, placeholder text zero, and we're going to see that's way too small. So we can choose our label settings, new label settings, click label settings, and we're going to uh, change our font to, uh, we're going to change our font size uh, to, I'd say like 60. And 60 is perfect. Uh, we'll move it out a little bit, and that looks perfect. So now what we need to do is we need to set our score to zero every time we die, because auto load uh, won't change when we do get tree dot um, uh, reload current scene. So we're going to do func underscore ready, which runs code at the first frame of the game, and we're going to change auto load dot score equals zero. But we're going to get an error, and we're going to be like, oh, what is auto load? It's not declared in the current scope. So to get an auto load, we press project, project settings, auto load, and we're going to choose our path. We're going to do scenes, auto load dot scene, and our no name is auto load. So now it's going to turn green as soon as uh, the script identifier becomes cooler. We'll just change it and we'll save it, and it becomes green. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna actually change our uh, different, uh, our, we're gonna just wanna change our label. So in func underscore process, which is different from physics process, we're just going to wanna get a reference to our label. So you can type in dollar sign, canvas layer, and we can choose our label. We're gonna do dot text to get our text value, which is right here. And then we're going to want to make it equivalent to str autoload.score. So the reason why we're doing str is because autoload.score is an int. Next, we're going to, want to go to tubes. We're going to want to add a new area 2D. And we're going to name this score. Next, what we're going to do is want to add a collision shape 2D because that's how you uh, have an, uh, we, that's how you use composition in Godot. We're then going to go to a rectangle shape and we're going to make it the size of this little barrier. We're going to want to do the same thing that we did earlier with a body entering. So we're going to click node, body entered, connect, and in body entered, we're just going to increase our score by one. So we're going to do auto load dot score plus equals one. Finally, I don't really like the colors. I want our bird to have some color, so we're going to click on our bird, go to our mesh instance 2D, go to visibility, and we're going to change its modulate to yellow like a bird. I then, I'm then going to go to our tubes. We're going to change both of our mesh instance 2Ds by control clicking them, click visibility, change its modulate, and we're going to change it to a green. And voila, you are finished with your Flappy Bird game.